I just had a new machine uh, at work, um, and so I thought I would screencast um, myself installing Sage. Um, installing Sage. Uh, I'll be installing Sage 4.8 on Mac OS 10. The first thing you need to do is go to the Sage website. So I'll just open up a browser window. I'm going to navigate to sagemath.org. Once we're there, I mean, there's lots of information. You can try out Sage for free. Um, on the, on the online notebook or you can um, just directly download it. I'm in Cardiff so I'm going to choose the, uh, the mirror service uh, in the, the UK mirror service there. Click on that. It's automatically recognizing that I'm running um, on an Apple machine and it's a relatively new machine. Most new Apple machines are um, Intel's. So I click on that and now we have a few choices to make. There are, first of all, you have to find out if your computer is a 64-bit or a 32-bit system. Um, you see there we have say, two Sage 4.8s. They're both for the 64-bit system. I, I actually think that coincidentally there's some work being done uh, in the background. I'm not too sure. Um, and so the 32-bits don't seem to be there. But uh, if you had to choose whether or not you're on a 32-bit or a 64-bit system, you first have to find that out. The quickest way to do so is to open a terminal window and simply type uname dash space dash n. I've got x8664. That is what you expect if you're running a 64-bit system. Um, I believe it's i386 on, on a Mac, which would indicate a 32-bit um, system. So once, uh, once you know what you want, you then get to choose whether or not you want the, the plain .dmg file or the slash app .dmg file, this second one here. Um, the slash app has a few extras. Um, I'm pretty used to, to the command line, etc. So I'm going to be very happy with the with the .dmg. And so I'm just going to go ahead and, and download that. Right, so that'll, that'll probably take a, a little while now. Right, so the download has now um, come through. And so uh, I'm just going to click on the DMG file like I would anything else I install. So opening might take a little while. It's now checking the volumes, finishing. And what pops up is this screen that's the mount, the mount of disk. And there's Sage in there. And if you open up the README file, um, you get the, uh, the instructions of what, what to do. And it more or less just tells you drag the Sage folder somewhere. Example, the Applications uh, folder. So let's let's go ahead and do that. I'll open up the Applications folder, um, which is down here. That's just where normal stuff is. So I'm going to take that whole folder and just drag it into there. This sometimes takes a while. I mean, the Sage folder is pretty big; contains a lot of stuff. So we just wait for this to, uh, to finish, and we're almost there. Right, so that, uh, that file's just about finishing to copy now. Once that's done, we can go in this file and just run Sage um, in a terminal by double-clicking on this. Double click on that. It says uh, download from the internet. Are you sure you want to open it? Yes, that's fine. And now what we have here is the first time you run Sage. These things are all normal. A few things just uh, uh, get get moved around, and that's that's normal. The first time you run Sage. And that's that's it. So. We can now um, use Sage. This is the command line version of Sage. You can also use a notebook, um, which is a, a, a nice GUI. So if you just write notebook in those brackets, the first time you do so, uh, it, it asks you to, to define a, a set of passwords. So I'll just put in a password there and ask me to retype it. I retype it. And then Sage just opens up in a, uh, a Sage notebook opens up, so you can open up a new worksheet. So first sheet, and you can just do 
whatever you could normally do. Um, so I'm going to sign out from that. And then to, to close this down, return to uh, command line mode, you just press control C and then you're, you're back in Sage. Um, I'll just exit that. And that's more or less everything you need to do. You, you're very welcome then to just drag this and put this on your dock somewhere. Um, if you'd like to do a little more, um, you can create an alias and run it, which will allow you to run it directly from the, the command line. So in your, uh, in your home folder, just make sure we're in our home folder, this is a terminal right here. Um, I'm going to use VU, which is a text editor, but there are various other text editors you could use to create a file called bash underscore login. Note the, the period before means that it's a, it's a hidden file because it's just a configuration file that doesn't necessarily need to be shown. And then I'm going to write alias sage equals applications sage sage. So all that's saying is, okay, from now on, every time I type the word sage, I want the, the terminal, I want the bash terminal to realize that what I'm actually typing is applications, the folder sage, followed by the actual sage command. So um, I'm going to go ahead and save that, which is done by in, in, in V using uh, colon W. And then if I quit, and now I'm going to close down the terminal, and I'm going to open up the terminal again. And now if I run, if I just type sage, sage runs. Uh, that's the easiest way I found to install sage. And I believe that's all you need to install sage on Mac OS. Uh, on Linux, the process is, is uh, relatively similar. Um, and I've never done it on Windows, so I don't know. Hope this video helps.